Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the JMA season model for today's uh, fur video. So uh, we're looking at the uh, Japanese uh, model for the next three months. It's going to take us through the autumn, uh, basically. So we can look at September, October, November, and the overall uh, autumn uh, Ming, uh, you know, uh, setup. Um, so I shall get on with that for you very shortly. It's ahead of the uh, third and final autumn 2021 season model roundup that we're going to be doing uh on saturday that'll be released on saturday morning so uh we'll get around 16 long range models together with that we're gonna be an absolute epic um and the chairman will form part of that uh update of course as it always does um but uh, of course we've got the other other models to go through we won't be able to look at it in depth and you can get a lot of information from the jma season model we always like to take this one out and uh, you know have a look at it in its own terms so that's what we're going to do uh for this uh video guys do a sort of extra video uh for you uh on this uh wednesday uh so just say about the first video released today was our 7 a.m uh forecast we also uh released the usa forecast could be uh significant developments there uh on the gulf coast uh next week so check out uh, what's going on uh, in the United States. And also got a 10 to 14 day, which will include all our break features. And that will be coming up later on this afternoon. Please like, share, subscribe on all other videos. Thank you so much everybody for being a man. Hope you're having a lovely Wednesday. Right, so uh, let's go through this then. I'm going to start off with the uh, JMA 500 millibar high dominant from the North Pole and Arctic view down for September. This is how September is shaping up uh, with the uh, JMA season model. So going for um, a mid-Atlantic ridge in September up towards Greenland with a trough of below average height slow pressure to our east and northeast. Um, so this will leave us bringing like a northerly or northeasterly uh, wind really between the block to the northwest and the trough to the northeast. So it does suggest quite a cool uh, September with winds in from like a northerly or perhaps northeasterly direction. And maybe quite unsettled uh, for September as well. Uh, so it could be quite a cool and unsettled month with the wettest weather probably going to be in more eastern areas, if anything. Looks very unsettled for northern Europe. But anything with this is, but the Atlantic is blocked off. So it's not like um, a wet, uh, westerly Atlantic driven uh, month. Uh, what rain there is, is probably coming in in form of showery conditions from, from the east and the northeast. So it's a little bit unusual, actually. Quite, a, quite an unusual anomaly, especially for September, which we don't really associate with uh, northern blocking. But there is quite a bit of, around, quite a bit of it around. Um with that. I'm um, going through to October and it's actually a very similar pattern. This is the 500 millibar uh, high tsunami for October from the Arctic and North Pole view down. So again we still see the above average heights in North Atlantic, Mid Atlantic Ridge going up towards Greenland. The trough of low pressure looks like it's weakened but maybe back further westward. So this white area here or this cream area could well be a trough of low pressure within the 500 millibar flow because there's got to be low pressure somewhere you can't really see much in the way of low pressure except there so there will be low pressure though um in some parts of the northern hemisphere in uh in, in october and so i would anticipate that this is like a trough of low pressure through here with a ridge down here across the southern and southeastern parts of Europe and, and a blocking feature in the North Atlantic up towards Green. So again, that could be quite a cool and unsettled uh, month and probably more unsettled there actually than, than in September because it looks like the trough is backed into the west of Europe. So both September and October could be quite cool with winds generally from the north to northeasterly sort of direction. And then this is November. Now we're three months out, so we're, we're a very long way out, of course. Um, so the high pressure looks like it's sort of slipping in towards the UK a little bit more. But it's still ridging uh, northwards. Uh, trough of low pressure across northern Scandinavia and into western Russia. It looks like this will sort of send the jet stream on the northwest southeast alignment, really. And so that won't be an overly uh, that won't be an overly warm month either. Uh, in fact, I think this could be going for a cool of an average autumn, which would be a little bit surprising. We don't get many 
uh, cool um, below average temperature uh, temperatures in the autumn. You know, uh, generally autumn is a, is quite a warm season these days. But uh, but that looks like it's sort of set up that will probably produce quite a cool autumn, to be honest. Uh, this will be bringing in some uh, influences from the Atlantic. So, uh, I mean, there would be periods of milder weather, I would have thought. But overall, I reckon that is probably same jet stream on a northwest southeast alignment uh, between the lower pier and, and the ridge just here and pushing northwards and so probably quite a coolish uh, month coming up uh, there this is the overall autumn 500 millibar height anomaly for the autumn 2021 from the jma and it is going for that mid-atlantic ridge uh, going up towards greenland trough of low pressure probably through Scandinavia and so it means that overall the mean sort of wind direction for this autumn for the UK and Ireland is going to be like northwest to possibly even uh, northerly and so that would be quite a cool autumn uh, coming up. Let's look at it all in a little bit more detail uh, from the tropical and mid-latitude view. So we can't see the Arctic and, and the North Pole and Scandinavia, Greenland, Iceland. They're all off the chart up here, which for this particular update, because there's so much sort of uh, blocking going on, is, is a little bit, um, you know, that's, that's a little bit of a nuisance. But we have looked at that view down, so we, we already know what's going on. Um, with uh, with the overall sort of northern hemispheric pattern. Uh, UK line in the top right-hand corner chart as you're looking at it. This is Europe, of course, over here. And that's going to be uh, North America just there. So we're back to September. This is 500 millibar height anomaly for September. Again, see that mid-Atlantic ridge, and we know that it extends up to uh, Greenland as well. There's a trough of low pressure that's to our northeast. And, uh, and so we're probably bringing them in from like a northerly, northeasterly direction in September. So the temperature anomaly is uh, no better than average. It's a little bit cooler than average to our south. If we come over here, you can see many parts of, sort of Western Europe are, are having below average temperatures during uh, September. So September could be quite a cool month if that comes off. And rather unsettled as well, which is what I thought as that trough of low pressure comes in from like the east and, and the northeast. It's a little bit different though. It's not a typical unsettled bump uh, that's coming in from the Atlantic. So it's not westerly Atlantic driven uh, outbreaks of rain from, from the Atlantic Ocean. It's actually showery sort of rain that will be coming in from the east and from the northeast. So rather a strange and, and different sort of uh, month in September. The mean wind direction, means are always a little bit difficult to make out these black arrows, but the mean wind direction is like northerly to northeasterly uh, into uh, the UK. If we get, come over here, you see again winds in from the north over there as well. So, so generally, uh, generally like, like a northerly type uh, influence during September. Quite a cool and showery month coming up. Uh, October looks like that. So uh, this is the 500 bit about high for October, of course. And uh, again, we have the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which we can make out just here. We know that, again, that does back up to, uh, that backs up to uh, Greenland and into the Arctic. There's probably some sort of upper-level trough in the 500 bit above flow through here, we thought. Uh, so the uh, precipitation anomaly for October is actually a little bit dry. It's not as unsettled in October. It's uh, perhaps a little bit dry than average. Although, again, just to our east through here, we do have above average precipitation across many parts of uh, Europe. So it's just where we bat that trough far enough west to tap into that. Temperature on is very close to average uh, once again. Not a particularly big deviation. Perhaps not quite as cool, though, across Western Europe as, as September is. And the mean wind direction, and I think it's over during the temperatures, actually, in October, because the mean wind direction, which you can make out from the black arrows, is, again, coming in from the north and from the northeast. And if we've got, like, a uh, mean wind direction from the north and the northeast in October, I see no reason why we wouldn't have a colder than average month. Remember, autumn is a cooling season. So if we have a, a rather cool month in September with north northeast winds, then we can have an even cooler month in October with north or northeast winds. So the model, as always, with the seasonal, um, you know, climate models, it, uh, it's overdoing the temperature there. If we have a wind in from the north northeast in October, we will have a colder than average month. Of course, if we don't have a wind in from the north northeast in October, then it won't be a cold average month. But if wind is going from the northeast in October, we will have below average temperatures. 
Uh, right, so we go through to... Uh, so sometimes you have to interpret these models, uh, particularly with uh, precipitation and, and with temperature. Uh, and then go through to November, and we have above average heights being over and just to the west of the country. Still, <coughs> excuse me, still a ridge extending a little bit further north. As I thought in uh, November, we could be sending jet stream on more of a northwest, southeast line. Probably more influence from the Atlantic, though, uh, in uh, in November. A largely drier than average month uh, again. Average to drier than average precipitation in November with that high pressure sort of in control of weather. And again, the temperature anomaly is very close to average, uh, not a particularly big deviation. So uh, the mean wind direction in October, it looks more variable, uh, actually. As I suppose we're under the area of high pressure. So actually, perhaps not as much of a northwest south as I was checking as I thought. It's kind of like, I think it's kind of like still coming in from like a northerly, northwesty direction, though. Um, so if we come over here... Again, these black are always difficult to make out, but it looks like the wind direction is, it, is doing something a little bit like that around the ridge. So we're probably still just about uh, bringing in sort of a, a northerly type flow, albeit perhaps with a little bit more influence from the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Of course, the exact position of the ridge will be critical, and it's, it's like three months away anyway, so that's the most unreliable part of the update. But even there, there would be some cool uh, or, or cold potential, I would have thought. And the overall uh, pattern for the autumn for the next three months, uh, three monthly uh, normally looks like that. So it is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge up towards Greenland idea with, uh, we can't see Scandinavia, but with the trough of low pressure uh, through Scandinavia up there. So uh, the temperature anomaly for, uh, for the autumn is overall very close to, to slightly above average, but I reckon with the pattern that it's setting up, it will actually be a colder than average autumn, which would be a little bit different, different, but something that we don't get all that often. And the uh, precipitation anomaly is, again, a little bit drier than average, which is probably fair enough, actually, given the amount of ridging that we've got going on in the Atlantic. We are not bringing in uh, the low-pressure systems from off the Atlantic, but bring rain-bearing uh, rain uh, weather systems through the country through the autumn. So it's, it would be a less stormy autumn than uh, we normally get. We wouldn't have as much wind. We wouldn't have as many gales. And we, as a result as, of that as well, we wouldn't have as much rain. What rain we do get, what precipitation we do get, tends to come in more from uh, showery conditions to the east. The overall mean wind direction for this autumn, and this is the reason that I think, despite the fact that model doesn't show it, but this is the reason I think the model is actually forecasting a cold and average autumn, is because the mean wind direction is northeasterly, um, and in a cooling season, uh, you know, that is going to, those northeast winds are going to get colder and colder as we, as we go along. So you would expect that if the mean wind direction over the next three months is from the north to northeast, then, then we would be in for a cooler than average season. So, uh, that's how the JMA is looking for, let's put webcam back up, that's how the JMA is looking for, for the autumn of 2021. Very interesting uh, season coming up, if this is right. JMA is a pretty good model. It doesn't get it right all of the time, but you'll remember last winter, it was only the Asian models. It was the JMA and the Beijing Climate Centre that got the winter correct. We had a total failure uh, for last winter with all of the European models, including the UK Met and the ECM. We had a total failure for um, the North American models as well. Last, last winter it was the Asian models that correctly identified the, the uh, amount of blocking that we had last winter within the high latitudes. So it, it's always worth taking the JMA seriously uh, with what it's saying. And, uh, and it is quite an interesting uh, autumn and it's uh, predicting rather different to, to like a normal autumn pattern but that doesn't mean it's right you know um, just because pa uh, past performance is quite a good model it does not necessarily mean that this occasion it's got it's got things correct so we'll have to wait and see how, uh, how it works out and you'll find out on Saturday how this sits within uh, the wider sort of long-range seasonal model output. So that's going to be interesting to have a look at, I think, uh, on Saturday morning when we do our third and final autumn 2021 season model roundup. And then you'll find out on Sunday what we're forecasting at Gas Webbies, because we'll be releasing our autumn forecast on Sunday. 
Right, so that's it for this uh, extra video. We'll be back in an hour or so's time with uh, the uh, 10 to 14 there that will include all upgrade features as well. Will there be any sign of northeast winds in September? With that, you'll find out a little bit later on. Uh, but for this GMA seasonal update, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.